Thank you for standing by. This is the Craig Holiday conference call, the third in a series of conference calls. The topic for today is uh, 10 points of leadership. And if you know anything about Craig Holiday, you know that he's been just tearing it up on the road for us. Um, and not too many people have had such a great impact on so many of our leaders in the field for the last several months. And uh, with the, um, the leadership events that we're coordinating around the country in different markets, plus the SOS tour that's been happening, um, we've just been having a great experience working with Craig and uh, getting so much new leadership out there on the right track and really focused on their business. So without any further delay, I'd like to turn the call over to your host for this morning, Mr. Craig Holiday. Craig, are you out there? Hi, I'm, I'm here, Ed. Can you hear me all right? You sound great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, welcome everybody all over the country. It's great to have you on this call. I'm excited sitting in my office in Orange County, California. Beautiful weather here today. Uh, just uh, excited about the day, passionate and ready to get rolling. So I'm really excited about the topic we're going to talk about today. But just for a second, I want to just talk about all of you out there that were at the SOS tour in Nashville. Love being, love spending time with you guys. It was absolutely a launch. Uh, we talked about getting it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And uh, I just want to encourage you out there, if you are out there listening to this call and you have not been at a Summer of Success uh, tour yet, you have got to make it. There's one September 11th in Vegas, Chicago the 25th of September, whatever you have to do to get there. I promise you it will take so much time off your business and take time to you getting to your goals that you want because, you know, it's, it's almost like a mini summit. There was so many great things that went on. Larry did a great job. Um, MJ was, was unbelievable. Um, and a lot of you will be on this call tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Um, Carl was just outstanding in the rap over the weekend. And, you know, people that came into that weekend left with a lot more than just uh, technique or how to build a business. They left with a huge why. So I want to encourage you out there, if you haven't been there, you haven't made it to SOS Tour yet, get there as quickly as you can. Get your reservations and plan on being there and registering. The other thing is the Dallas Leadership coming October 7th, 16th and 17th. That is going to be an unbelievably outstanding weekend for teaching on leadership. And that's my topic today, so I'm excited to get started about it. You know, one of the things we're going to learn today and probably a lot of us are starting to understand is that leadership is much more than just technique. It's much more than fundamentals. Leadership is passion. Leadership is heart. Leadership is leading with, uh, with a passion for a dream and for goals. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote for you this morning. Leadership is not so much about technique and methods as it is about opening the heart. Leadership is about inspiration of oneself and of others. Great leadership is about human experiences, not processes. Leadership is not a formula or a program. It's a human activity that comes from the heart and considers the heart of others. It's an attitude and not a routine. That's one of my favorite quotes because when you understand that about leadership, that it comes from the heart, in this business especially because this is a hard business, we're out there changing people's lives in so many areas in so many ways from a financial perspective, from an inside perspective, from the, the heart of people changing, their dreams coming true, and they're, they're an opportunity for us to help people to get it. But leadership is, uh, is important. If you, you're out there today and you call yourself a leader, I'm going to give you an opportunity today to take your test. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you 10 points of leadership. And what I want you to do is next to each one of these, as you take your notes, and I know some of you are sitting in cubicles at work and you might not be able to write, you just got to listen, but you can go back and listen to this later. But there's 10 points I want to talk about today. And I want you to give yourself a one to a five on these 10 points as I go through them. And so by the end of this uh, talk today, you're going to be able to get, grade yourself out to where you stand on leadership. And, you know, one of the things you, you understand in this business is that you don't all of a sudden have a 1,000 people in your group and you become a leader. You, your business will reflect your ability to lead. Your business will reflect your ability as a human being and as a person with passion and heart and soul and a person that understands this business. So what we can do and constantly do, and I talked about a little bit when we talked about the power of relational marketing, what we do is we work on ourselves. We work on ourselves as leaders. We look at the things that we need to change in our lives so, so that our business can reflect that. So none of you are going to end up tomorrow morning with a 1,000 people in your group and then all of a sudden try to figure out what it means to be a leader. You're going to learn to be a leader. You're going to learn to change. You're going to learn to do the things that it takes in leadership. And on that journey, your business will grow and followers will join your business. And then you will teach them to be leaders. So let's go through these points today. It starts out with point number one. A leader does more than anyone else. A leader does more than anyone else in their group all the time. If you want to lead, you've got to be the lead ship. You've got to be the flagship. You've got to be willing to do what you're telling other people to do. This business is a business. Leadership is action, not position. No one's giving you a position in this business. You gain position. You gain leadership. You gain pin levels. You gain rank by action. 
So for all of us, as we start to look at our lives and look at, let's say, the last 90 days and we reflect on the last 90 days and we've got to grade ourselves a one to five on leadership, what points am I going to get? Am I the leader of my group? I call it trench living. It's one of my favorite terms, trench living, living in the trenches all the time, the battle of smoke on you. You know, none of us can stand at the top and try to yell down to the group and tell them what they need to do. We've got to be down the ones in the trenches all the time doing what we say. We need to read more than our people. We need to, to do more every single day. When I got into network marketing and, uh, way back when, my goal was to outwork my group. There was nobody in my group that worked harder than me. And what that did by that action was giving me the position of leadership. So all of you on this call, we need to evaluate how hard do we work this business. What have you done the last 90 days? Like the 90 days, uh, the P90X, did you work that hard for 90 days in this business? And unless we're doing that, we will not have leadership in our business. We can't talk a good game. Talk's cheap. Talk means nothing. What means something is that your head's down, you're doing exposures every day, you're doing the game plan that Larry's taught us, you're out there doing the action parts of the business. That's what gives you position. That's what gives you leadership. Not talking about it. When we were in Nashville, I brought the, the, uh, the, the, stars and, uh, the star diamonds and above on stage. And there were almost, I don't know, 300 and some people in that room. I think we had seven people on stage, I believe. It might have been eight. But I pointed to these people as leaders because I guarantee you, as I looked at those people, and I knew every single one of them personally, they are working this business. They are out every day. You won't find them home. You won't find them talking about what to do. They're on conference calls. They're on three-way calls. They're handing out uh, uh, Decide DVDs. They're doing follow-ups. They're doing the activity every single day that it takes to build their life and to build their business. They wouldn't have been standing on that stage if they hadn't done that. This business rewards you for action, not for position. All of us got started at point zero, no volume, no business, nobody involved with us yet, and we start from there. Equal playing ground, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, and that's where we all start. So on the, the fact of do I outwork my group, am I a leader in my business, am I setting the example all the time, am I living in the trenches? And so if you're, a, if you're a leader on this call today and you grade yourself out on that and say, am I a trench liver? Do I live in the trenches every single day as I grow my business? Point number two, a leader pursues change. A leader pursues change. Not only pursues change, but demands it of themselves. All of you have the business right now, the business that you have, as you look at your organization, you look at your downline, you look at your group, you look at your customers, you have exactly the business that you deserve to have right now. And I know for a lot of us that bothers us, but the good part about that is that means I can change that at any time. But none of us come into this business prepared to lead in an organization like this. Most of our, a lot of us had jobs where we didn't necessarily have to lead a lot. We went to work, we did our job. In this business, is totally different. In this business, you lead by what? By being the person that pursues change. People follow people that are changing. We talk about it constantly. It's one of the big things we've been talking about so much on our tour is the personal change. We heard people, Daryl, Daryl in, um, in Nashville, talked about personal growth, personal change. And when I think about the leaders that I've worked with over the last year throughout this organization, the ones that have the biggest businesses, the ones that have the most quality people in their organization are those that have changed the most. You know, you, you, you look at your organization and you look at yourself and you start to decide, how much do I want to grow? How much do I want to change? And so for a lot of us, the fears of what people think, the fears of failure, all these things, the issues of our life, the things that hold us back, like our past, the things we can't do anything about, the things that happened as a child, all the things that keep us standing at a staircase. You know, a lot of us are on this spiral staircase. We're standing on a tread halfway up. We're going to make a decision in our life to climb forward or to go back down. We can't remain on that tread. And for a lot of us today, we're standing on that very tread. And we're deciding, do I want to go up or am I going to go backwards because I can't stay where I am? The thing that will change you and move you forward, the thing that will allow you to go up the stairs and not stay at the bottom or go back down, the thing that will allow you to move forward and to lead your organization is personal growth, personal change. And how do we do that? We read every single day. As a leader, if you call yourself a leader, I would outread my group. Right? I always knew if my group was reading 10 pages a day, and that was what we all talked about in my organization way back when, just like we do today, and what Larry set a precedent in the organization of reading 10 pages a day, as a leader, I wanted to read 20. I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. I wanted to do more than that, not because I was arrogant and wanted to be better. I just knew if I was going to lead those people, then I knew without a doubt in my mind that I had to do more than them. You know, I've read a book a month for, for, for 25 years. Right, Because I just knew that if I'm going to be on a stage or I'm going to be in front of people, I've got to continue to grow personally. That's never going to stop until the day they put you in the ground and drop you, you know, put you in the casket and drop you in the ground. That's the day we stop growing. 
And if anybody ever challenges you, I remember somebody asked me one, or challenged me one time, you're the, I've never met a guy in my life who likes to grow personally or talks about personal change or is always wanting to change. Well, I've never apologized for that because I don't want to stay where I am. You know, the issues of our life constantly come up. But we, if we can move forward and begin to look at where we're going and not where we've been, and we can, we can commit ourselves to personal growth through CDs every day. I challenge you, shut off the radio in your car and start putting CDs on and listen to Jim Rome and listen to John Maxwell and listen to Brian Tracy and listen to leaders in this business and listen to CDs of people that are going to help change your life because most of us need to reignite our thinking process. Most of us have this person on one shoulder saying, what do you think you're doing? What makes you think you can be a leader? What makes you think you are a leader? And that sits on one shoulder. The other shoulder is this voice saying, someday, some way, you're going to do something great with your life. I want you to know if you don't change, if you don't change who you are, then you're going to never do those great things with your life. And we're going to listen to that other voice and we're going to stay where we are. And, you know, struggle is part of that. Struggle is personal change. If I'm in an audience of a 1,000 people, I, I say, raise your hand if you want to change personally. You know how many hands go up? Not very many. Why? Because people don't like change. It hurts. It's struggle. You have to look in the mirror. You have to be honest about who you are and what your life's about. And we can't change till we have the knowledge of what we need to change. And that's what we gain by reading, and that's what we gain by the association of the people in this business. You know, I love being around the leaders in this business. I love being around the top people. I love to in Nashville. Why? Because they challenge me. You know, I, they, they're looking to me to help them grow, and I know i got to grow personally every single day. So you have to be on a personal growth. You have to be – your life needs to be climbing upward. You can't stay stagnant. A lot of us live mediocre and average lives, and a lot of it is because we haven't been willing to change. And, you know, I've said it before, and struggle, you know, I said it last, I think it was the last call we had. You know, struggle's painful, but regret's more painful. So the personal growth and the personal change is what's going to give you the ability in this business to go out and do magnificent things with your life and magnificent things with your business. Point number three, a leader can communicate vision in the lives of others and call them to action. A leader can communicate vision in the lives of others and call them to action. When someone spends time with you in your business, whether it's across the table at a Starbucks, whether it's on a conference call, whatever it is, when people spend time with you, is their life changed? Do they have a greater vision for what their life's about? If I spend time with you, I don't want to talk so much about technique. I want to talk about your dreams and where you're going and what you want to accomplish in your life because I want to be able to create a vision for you. Because once we do that, it'll be unacceptable for you to not accomplish it. And you've all been given that in your life. You all know deep down in your hearts and your souls what it is you're to do, what it is you're to accomplish in your life. There's no doubt in my mind that you know what that looks like. It's, you've been given that vision. But now what we need to do is we need as leaders to be able to implant in the lives of others. That's what makes great leaders. If you think in your life of the people that are great coaches or great leaders, then what are they able to do? They're able to stand on a stage or sit across from people, and they're able to let them see not where they are but where they can be. I often say to people, if you could see yourself the way I see you, you would be so accomplished and so great moving forward in your life. Because we, most of us don't spend time looking at our great qualities. We look at the bad parts of our life. And so as leaders, we need to be the ones that, that carry on and stand next to someone and walk them to that lake and run to the lake with them and get them to where it is that their dreams are. So if we want to spend time together, let's talk about the vision. I want you to know that you believe in you and you believe in your dream. So as leaders, if I'm spending time with my group, I'm not talking about my business. They're not interested in my business. They're not interested in what I'm doing. They're not interested in how many exposures I've done. I don't need to talk about that. I want to talk about them. I want to sit around with a group of people and say, okay, you're financially free. You've got 365 days. You have all the money you want and all the time you want. What are you going to do with your life? Right? What are you going to do with your life? Leadership is a special quality which enables people to stand up and pull the rest of us over the horizon. Leadership is a special quality which enables people to stand up and pull the rest of us over the horizon. And that's what a lot of us do. You're the belief for people. You know, it's your life that they're looking at. You know, you're the one that they believe in right now. They believe in Beachbody and they believe in the business, but you're the one who showed it to them. You're the one who mentors them. And so your belief and your posture and, and who you are to them, okay, the fact that you can communicate where it is they're going because they're looking to you for that. So many people get into network marketing and they get in the first three months, they don't believe. They, they just don't think it's going to work because everybody's telling them that and all the people around them have tried to discourage them. And we as leaders don't have that choice. We as leaders need to be the ones that constantly are pulling them along with us. Sometimes we have to carry them. Sometimes we have to kick them in the butt. Sometimes we're ahead of them. Sometimes we have to get behind them and push them. Whatever it takes as leaders, we need to be those that communicate vision in the lives of our people. That when they get, you know, I always tell people there's the kind of people that, that you're excited when they walk in the room and kind of people when you're excited when they leave the room. And you know what, which kind of person are you? 
Are you the kind of person that when you spend time with your group that they leave fired up, that they leave excited, that they believe they can do more than they could ever do before? That's a gift you have. And as a leader, you need to establish that. That needs to become a primary focus and a primary, primary goal for you is to become that kind of leader. That's who leads nations. That's who leads the world. That's who leads a business, and that's who leads your business. Because the way we live our lives is the way we live our life, right? The way we live our lives every day is the way we're going to live our life. So are you a visionary? On a one to five points on this point, are you a visionary for your group? Are you the one they look to to let them know that it's okay, we're going to make it, we're, we can endure, we can finish? You know, that's the encourager you need to be. That's trench living. Point number four, a leader is competent and knows their business. A leader is competent and knows their business. You need to know this business, right? Every part of it. You know, one of the things we do, we get in the business and people say, well, I don't really understand the compensation for it. Well, learn it. Know what it is. Know what it's about. You don't have to know every intricate detail, but don't pass leadership up. You know, you get the answers for it. You understand what that is. You understand exactly what it takes to build this business. You know, it, you don't pass leadership up because you pass leadership up, it's going past you. I wanted to be the leader in my group. That's why I studied it. Some of you need to understand the trends in America. You need to understand what's going on with the obesity and the challenges in this country. Why are you in this business? If we, if we understand that, right, and then we have confidence. And our confidence is in our competence in this business. Do we know the parts of it? Do we do the parts of it? Do we teach the parts of it? Can people watch us and see our lives doing the very thing that it is that they need to do to succeed? But we need to become competent. So, so whatever you feel like you're lacking in in this business, whatever you feel like your weaknesses are, change them. You know, be challenged. Challenge yourself every day you get up. What do I need to learn? What difference? How much can I grow? You know, our mind only grows when we put information in it, and, and our mind only grows when we add to it. So many people in life quit. You know, it's, they say the saddest thing is when a, you know, a man's dream dies, but, but yet he hasn't died. You know, I mean, how many of us just stop growing? We stop, we stop becoming competent. And so we get in this business, and we just kind of let it happen. You need to take charge of your business. You need to understand your business, every part of it. You know, you need to have the posture and strength that attracts people to you in this business. You know what? That comes from competence. Competence about why you're in this. Competence about every day of, of knowing why you've been called to be in this business and what your goals are and where you're headed and have them written down. And when are you going to the next rank? If you're a diamond, when are you going one star? When are you going two star? Write it down. Have it written down. Have a goal. Allow yourself to, to have an opportunity to fail. You know, if we don't put our goal and write it down, if we aren't competent in our goals every day, if we aren't competent in our work habits every single day, then any day is good. You know, some days today, it's not someday I'm going to be a five star, someday I'm going to be a 10 star, someday I'm going to be a two star. That day is today. Put a goal on it, write it down, and then don't fail. You know, we don't write goals down because we're afraid of failing. You know, just then don't. Don't allow yourself to do that. You know, get on the road and get in the, in the daily endurance that it takes to succeed. So be confident in your business. Have a business, have a, a posture, have an attitude. What draws you to this business? Your attitude about your life and your confidence that this thing works. So many people right now as a leader are looking to you. You got to believe because I'm not sure how much I have yet. You know, it's looking up at you with these big eyes like, are you sure it's going to work for me? And, you're, and sometimes it's not even the words you say, it's what they see when they see you. I watched leaders this weekend in Nashville. I stood back and I watched the leaders that were on that stage, and I watched them when they weren't on the stage, and I watched how they dealt with people, and I watched the way they were around people. And people were drawn to them. You know why they were drawn to them? Because they were confident. They were competent. They knew their business. They knew their life. They knew who they were. That's what drew people this weekend. The ones sitting in that audience that stood and watched those people stand on that stage, they knew those were the leaders. And it wasn't just because I brought them up on stage. They were those leaders all weekend. They were the leaders at the workout on Friday night. They were the leaders uh, in the morning when they were getting coffee and sitting there and talking and encouraging the people around them. Leaders are encouragers. And I watched them this weekend, and I watched what they did in the lives of the people. They touched so many people. As leaders, we go into events like a summer of success, and we show up there as leaders, and we don't just spend time with our, our group. We get out there, and we shake hands, and we encourage, and we're, we, we let people know they're welcome, and we, we pat them on the back, and we believe in them, and we look them in the eye, and we tell them they can do it. And we become visionaries for them, whether they're in our group or not, because the business is what we're building. The organization is what we're building. You know, this week I might not have as much success as you, but next week I have more. That's why we need each other, right? So we look at that as a team. This is a team. It's a team of leaders that are driving this business. And I know for some of you, you're frustrated. And, you know, I heard that from some of you this weekend. Hey, I wanted to be on that stage, Craig. When you brought those people up there, I was gritting my teeth. It was killing me. I want to be up there. Well, you know what? I believe that, but show me. Do what it takes to get there. 
Next time we make that call, we bring some people up. When we see you in Dallas in October, you know, be one of those leaders. Don't just talk about it. You know, be a trench person and get it done. Next point, a leader owns it. All right, a leader, a leader owns it. Number one, they own their business. What does it mean to own my business? It means that you're going to build it. Nobody's going to build it for you. You sit today at where you are in this business, and you are right where you should be. But let's change that. If you haven't done what you should have done the last 30 days, let's change that. Let's not stay there. Let's not live there. Let's not stand on the tread halfway up those stairs and decide to just stay there. It's not going to happen for us. So we got to own our business. We got to know. We got to. We got to be in charge of it. We got to be in the trenches. We got to be living it. We got to be in the personal growth part. All the things it takes to build this business, we've got to own it in our lives. No one's going to do it for us. Nobody's going to motivate you, right? You know, I'm not a motivational speaker. There aren't motivational speakers. They don't exist in this country because no one can motivate you. The person who motivates you is the one sitting in your, your seat. That's who's going to motivate you. That's who's going to grow your business. And once you own that in your life and take responsibility for that and realize you're the CEO of your company, how good is your company doing? How well are you doing? Because your individual volume grows the millions of dollars of volume this company grows. But if all the individuals don't grow, we don't grow as a company. We don't go to 100,000 coaches. We're at 30,000 now. And I've seen the ballistic growth of companies, and I was involved in one, and I know where we're going to be. Six to eight months, 100,000 coaches, if all of us individually do the things that we need to do. So you've got to own your business. Next, you've got to own your life. You've got to quit making excuses. You've got to get on the field and in the game. You've got to get off the bench. All right? You've got to make a decision for some of us for the first time in our lives that, you know what? And this is, again, if you want to be a leader, if you want to build a big organization. If you're on this call and you're happy with where you are and you're content with where you are, that's fine. Okay, but I'm talking today to leaders, those of you that want to lead this company, those of you that want to be on the bike ride in Europe, those of you that want to, when Carl calls in the top leaders in the country to his home in Malibu for a, a big summit, that you're invited, that you get the invitation, right? That's what you want to be, right? But you've got to own your life. You've got to be willing to take responsibility and quit blaming others for where you are. A lot of us have reasons to not be where we should be in our life. You know, I had them, terrible childhood, all this stuff, but do I break the chains or do I live there? Do I live there and make excuses the rest of my life, or do I take charge of my life and change those things? I decided to change some things in my life, which blessed my own kids and blessed my family, which never would have had that opportunity had I not done something to change my life. So you've got to own your life today. And so today, when you get off this phone call, think about where you are in your life and decide, am I going to take charge for the first time? Am I going to quit looking back at, and, and trying to grab hours of past that I can't get a hold of anymore in my life? Am I going to hold on to those and try to live there? Or am I going to turn around and face forward? You know, we need to glance over our shoulder to see where we've come from. But we don't need to turn around and go backwards. Because if we face forward, we're growing and we're moving forward. So you've got to own your life. Next, you've got to own your attitude. Your attitude belongs to you. You can't, don't give it to anybody else to control. When you get out of bed in the morning, you make a decision how you're going to handle your day. And you don't know what's coming. You know, we, don't, we can't see the future. We don't have a crystal ball. But as a leader, we've got to own our attitude every day. When I'm around you, I want to be with someone that's going to help me grow. I want to be with someone that's going to challenge my life. If I'm around people that are, that are that are pity parties, I'm not going to join the party, right? If you have people in your downline as a leader that are complaining to you, just tell them, look, go outside, there's a trash can, talk in it, and then come back and we'll talk. You know, if they have challenges, things we need to deal with, let's deal with them. Let's get a solution for them. But if, I'm not going to join the pity party as someone who's feeling sorry for themselves in their life. All of us have reasons to feel sorry for ourselves. All of us have situations in our lives that aren't the way we want them to be. You know what my answer to that is? Change it. And our attitude every day when we get out of bed until we go to bed at night, we control that. And the attitude of success is this, that you believe in yourself, you believe the past doesn't matter any longer, and you decide to make a decision to draw a line and move forward in your life. That's what leaders do. You know, no one wants to hear about all the challenges that have happened in your life. They want to see you move forward. You know, they want to see you kick adversity in the face. They want to see you, you know, face whatever these challenges are and these struggles and move forward in your life. So you've got to own your attitude. And next, you've got to own your presence and your posture. You know, you've got to own it every day. When I'm around you, what do you look like? Are your shoulders back? Are your eyes bright? Are you excited about life? And even though things, you know, if I'm with a, with a leader, I don't know if their things are going good or bad. Why? Because I don't know it because they work through it themselves. They're not going to bring it to the party. They're not going to bring it to the game. You know, you show up on the field, I put you in the game, then it doesn't matter what's going on, go win this game. Go win at life. And so those are the things we look at as a leader. We've got to own our business, we've got to own our lives, we've got to own our attitude, and we've got to own our own uh, posture and presence. 
Number six, a leader has to abs- have absolute confidence in their sweet spot. What is the sweet spot? Let me tell you, I was a baseball player. Um, there's a six-inch po- point of a baseball bat. If you hit the ball there, it goes out of the park. It's a sweet spot. All of us have that in our lives. There's something in our life that we want to do more than anything else. There's something that we, some of us almost feel like we're born to do. And for leaders that get it, guess what? You found this business to be that. Is it the Beachbody business? Is it, the, is it Shakeology? Is it P90X? Is it, no, you know what it is? It's a chance to become significant. It's a chance for that voice that always said, someday, some way, you're going to do something great with your life. And all of a sudden, you found out, this is it for me. And you wake up in the morning thinking about it, and you go to bed at night thinking about it. Because you know this is it. You know, it's fitness. It's a thing I love. It's changing people's lives. It's passionately being involved. It's having dreams of my own. It's knowing I can accomplish them. It's a gift that I can do anything I want to do. I can go after the dreams that have been in the attic that I've pulled down and started to believe in again. And how do I do that? It's because I know this is it for me. You know, I always use Mother Teresa as, a, as an example just because there's a woman whose sweet spot is to be in Calcutta and feed dying children. She doesn't want to live in the Ritz. She doesn't want to wear beautiful clothes. She doesn't want to drive a Mercedes. Her absolute sweet spot is getting up every single day and doing what she loves. And then when you can do that in life, when you can get paid to do what you love every day or just do what you love and not even get paid because it's your sweet spot, then all of a sudden you've determined this is it. And for some of you, you're there. For some of you, you know without a doubt in your mind, this is my sweet spot. This is what I was made to do. This is what I was designed to do. You know, you never probably thought it would be network marketing, but you know what? It's so much more than that, right? It's so much more than that, and we know that. So leaders know their sweet spot. They know what it is. They know what they've been designed to do. And I think for a lot of you that are leaders in this business, you know this is it. But if it is it, then give it what it's due. Don't play with it. Don't poke it with a stick. Go after it with the passion of your life with everything you've ever had. Because I guarantee you, the, your whole past, everything that's brought you up to today has prepared you to go after and to build yourself a gigantic organization where days you get letters from people just thanking you for being who you are in their lives. Those become some of your greatest blessings in this business. Point number seven, a leader has absolute confidence in their social style. There's a great book by Florence Lidauer called Personality Plus. I encourage you all to read it. Florence Littauer, L-I-T-T-A-U-E-R. All of our Rhino teams have read it. It's called Personality Plus. There's a test in there, and you get to take to see what your personality types are. There's four types of personalities. You were born this way. You can't change it. It's who you are. But the book helps explain to you what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And you know what? We need to know ourselves, right? And so your responsibility as a leader to know what your strengths are, to know what your weaknesses are. And with that knowledge, we can change it. <clears throat> with that knowledge, we can get around other people who mentor our life and ask them, what is it I need to do to change? Be, the, be truthful in my life. So as leaders, we need to know what those personality styles are. Know what I am. You know, I'm a sanguine, choleric personality. I know what the weaknesses are. Sanguines talk too much. Okay, Sanguines aren't good listeners. But I've spent many years of my life trying to become a great listener. And so I've worked on those, stre- those weaknesses, and I've tried to improve the strengths. You know, and so find out. Read that book. Take the test. Understand yourself. Again, this is part of personal growth and it's part of personal change. But you've got to have absolute confidence in who you are. And then absolute confidence. I, all of the people that I built my business with that were my top leaders, I gave them this test because I want to know, well, how can I encourage them? You know, I know choleric personalities can be challenged. I know phlegmatic personalities can't be. They've got to be encouraged. They've got to have your arm around them. You've got to hug them. You've got to believe in them. You know, cholerics say, just give me the bottom line. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Opposite people. But if I don't know who they are, if I don't know what their personalities are, if I don't know what their social styles are, how am I able to be the leader I need to be to them? So I want to know it about myself, and I want to turn around and know it about the people that are in my group. Okay, our next point. A uh, a leader gets it. The whole story. I talked about this weekend. You know, my topic kind of on, on before I, uh, Carl came up on uh, in Nashville was you got to get it. And what does that mean? What does it mean to get it in this business? The leaders on that stage get it. And you know, it's almost an aha moment. It's almost all of a sudden a moment in your life you go, wow, I get it now. I get what this is about. This business is not about P90X. It's not just about Shakeology. It's not about Recovery Drink. It's not about Turbo Fire. It's not about Chalene Extreme. It's not just about the business. It's about all of it. That's the whole story. If we know the whole story, and we look at the life change of so many people, even on some of you on this call, losing 100 pounds, 150 pounds, life change physically. But much greater than that is we realize what we get is what we need to do, what needs to get done. Do you realize that you're all part of a movement that is going to change America? 
I mean, think about that. You, as an individual, you're part of a movement that will change America. And I think to be part of something that's that big and that big a cause, and then to go back to myself and say, I'm a player in that. I'm on the field. I'm a trench guy. I'm in the game. I get this. I'm going to be one of the ones that make the difference. And so, to, you know, we all of us in life, to win as an individual, you know, individual sports never got me that excited. I loved team sports because as a team, we win together. As a team, one person fails, and you know what? The rest of them pick us up. And so in this business, if you get it, we're part of a cause. We're part of a movement. We're part of something as a team. And that's what I saw in Nashville. I saw people coming together with the same passions, the same dreams, the same visions, and they got it. So many people sent, sent me um, stuff on Facebook after that week and said, Craig, thank you. I get it now. I get it. I get what we're a part of. It isn't some small little thing where I'm, I'm going to get a new car. It's not some small little thing where someday I'm going to have a bigger house. It's so much bigger than that. And you know what? It's so much bigger because there's so much more stuff we have to do. That's what's going to create the significance in your lives as an individual. And you know what? Your light will shine. Your star will shine in this business. You saw it at Summit. You saw Christine. You saw Yolanda. You saw the top leaders from around the country. And what were they doing? They were on a stage, and their light was shining. But then I loved Carl's talk when he closed in Summit. And what did he say? Turn up the lights. The flare's over. The ambiance is over. Now what do we got to do? We got to go to work. It was such a, pro such a profound talk that Carl gave to close Summit. Sitting in that chair, the CEO of a large company sitting in a chair and just talking like you're sitting in his living room. Hey, we need you guys. We need you. We need you to get it done. If you guys get that, you'll be on that stage. You'll get the big checks. That's going to come. But once you get it and you get the whole story, that's why the people out there that you show this business to, they got to get the whole story. That's why you get them to functions. That's why they can't miss summer of success. That's why they can't miss game plans. That's why they can't miss um, uh, the Dallas leadership. That's why they can't miss Summit because they leave by getting it. And once they get it, there's no stopping them because now it goes from the mind to the heart to the soul. And once it enters the soul, you will not be denied. So leaders get it. Number nine, a leader is accountable to another. Find somebody in your life you can be accountable to in this business. You know, I have a partner I work out with every single, every single morning at 7 o'clock in P90X. We're on our 11th week. Mornings, I don't want to go down there, you know, the guy I live with. I don't want to meet him down there at 7 a.m. You know, I show up there, and sometimes I don't feel like it. I have a, I've had a long night. I've been traveling, whatever, but I show up. Why? Because I'm accountable to him. I told him I'm like gravity. You know, I tell people I work with, I'm like gravity. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to spend the time doing it. And that's what we all need to understand is we need to be accountable. This business is a great blessing because you have mentors that want to help you, somebody who's willing to be truthful about your life. We don't see ourselves a lot of the times the way we really are, but just be willing to ask somebody else, look at my life and tell me how I need to change. Look at my life and tell me the things about my life that need to become different. And if you're willing to do that with somebody in your life and you let them speak that truth into your life, I guarantee you it will enlighten you and allow you to move from this one tread upward instead of going backwards. So find somebody in your life you can be accountable to. Find somebody upline that's willing to, to spend time with you and, and be honest about your life. And that's the role I'm, I'm, I'm excited about having an opportunity to take in some of the leaders around the country in their, in their lives. Is you know If I sit down with some of these top leaders, we don't just talk about Beachbody and how to build their business. We talk about their lives and what needs to change and what character is about and what integrity is about. So when you look at your overall life, find somebody in your life that can speak truth into your life because that's what leaders do. Leaders can't be on an island by themselves. It's impossible. It's unacceptable because all of a sudden we, we don't have a true value and a true read of who we really are. And we get that from the reflection in the eyes and the hearts of other people that surround us, that care about us. In Proverbs it says there's wisdom in the counsel of many. So find those people in your life that can counsel you as a leader. It's necessary. You need it. Okay, and point number 10, characteristics of a leader. Okay, characteristics of a leader. Number one is focus. In this business, you've got to have focus. When I was a kid, we used to have magnifying glasses. We were little kids, and we'd run around with them. And if you get, them, get the sun shining through them and, and you put them on a leaf, there's a light that's kind of big, and it starts out about the size of a 50-cent piece or a dollar, silver dollar. But as you move that away from the, the leaf, the, 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 the focus gets smaller and smaller, and finally that light becomes almost just a pinpoint light. And when it gets to that pinpoint, it starts to burn that leaf. But when it's big, 50, it's larger and the light's bigger, it won't burn anything. Our focus in our life, our focus in this business has to be so laser and so pinpoint about what it is we're doing every single day. That's what forces us to have endurance. That's what forces us to move forward. That's what forces us to do every day the things that are uncomfortable to us. 
Don't ever apologize for your focus. Don't apologize for your dreams. Don't apologize to your friends because you're a focused person and you have a discipline and there's things you need to do in your life. One of my talks in the weeks ahead is going to be on how to use your calendar effectively and how to be effective every day, 168 hours a week in your business and in your home and your family so you can be where you are. You know, when you're not focused and you don't control your time, then when you're with your spouse, you're thinking you should be doing something else. And you're with something else, you think you should be doing something else. We can't ever be where we are. So when we focus on our life, it's controlling and working our hours every single day that, so we can always be where we are. So if I'm at a Little League game, I'm not texting about Beachbody because my time is with those kids at that Little League game. I can be where I am because I know my time set aside each week for every part of my life. So you've got to be focused as a leader. Number two is humility. Nobody wants to follow people who are arrogant. You want to be the big deal? You're not going to make it in this business. You know, I've, I've actually sat down with people in my business, and I, tr I, I started to show them the, the presentation of my, my business years ago. And I, and I finally, about halfway through, said, you know, this really isn't for you. We're not going to be able to work together because of the arrogance and the cockiness. Now, can those people change? Absolutely. But as leaders, you know who people want to follow? Humility. Those that are humble. Okay? Those, that, those that aren't out for the glory. Those are out to be significant. And that's what makes a big difference. So the characteristics of a leader is humility. Humble. You know, be quiet. Don't say what you're going to do. When you're with your people, don't talk to them about your business. Keep quiet. Be a trench person and just work it. Your light's going to shine. You're going to get your time on that stage. You're going to get your. You're going to be huge in this business. But trying to let everybody know that, or when you walk in a room, you know your arrogance or your cockiness or your I'm a big deal. There's no big deals in this business, right? The big deal is the business. And so if we understand that as leaders, people are drawn to people of humility. And you know that in your lives because if you think about some of the leaders you respect the most, a lot of them are those that are the most humble people that you know. Humble people have an incredibly powerful impacts as leaders. The next one is integrity. You know, we need to have integrity in our lives, that you're the same when the door is shut as when the door is open. And that's a question mark for a lot of us in our lives every single day. Am I making decisions with integrity? Because am I making decisions that's best for my people or am I making decisions that's best for me? I know Carl, and I've sat in some meetings with some of the leaders in this company, and they make decisions that are long-term, not short-term. They make decisions for the whole group, not for them individually. There's little tweaks. I think a perfect example of that was Summit when Carl talked about the vanilla shakeology. That was, to me, I mean, it, you know, for a lot of people, that might not have been a big deal. That was huge to me because what did that speak? Integrity. We're not going to mess around with this. We could have put that out, and I guarantee you they would have sold millions of dollars of it. Why? Because people wanted it. They were looking for it. But Carl couldn't sleep at night when the door was shut because why? That product did not have and pass the, the test of what this company is about. That was integrity. This company is driven by men of in, and women of integrity. Are you? That's your question. Are you that kind of person? The next one is that you need as a leader to make long-term decisions. You need to make decisions that are good for five years from now. Sometimes it's easy as leaders to make decisions that are best for us today. I don't see those decisions made being made in this company. I see decisions being made for what's good 10 years from now, what's good 25 years from now. It's like the old man planting the tree, a little tree, and a, a boy walks up to him and says, old man, why are you planting that tree? You'll never see it grow. And he said, I'm not planting it for me. And so if we understand that as leaders, we realize that you know our life is one of what? Our life is one of making decisions that are here, that we answer to a larger cause, that it's something much greater than ourselves. And that's why if you understand the organization that these, no, there's never going to be decisions made in this company for one person. They're going to be made for the masses because of what's best so that we are here 25 years from now and 30 years from now and 40 years from now and running $8 billion and $10 billion. And we have the potential to do that when we make decisions that are made, created on eternal values and not just um, decisions for today. And the last one is passion. Okay, The last one is passion. If we look at the passion of our lives as leaders, are we men of, and women of passion? The most powerful weapon is the human soul on fire. The most powerful weapon as a leader is your human soul on fire. Spurgeon said it, set your, set your life on fire and let the world watch you burn. What kind of passion do you have as a leader? You know, are you the one speaking the truth? Are you the one out there driving the business? Are you the one out there living every day full of so much hope and so many dreams and so many great things that you know your people have ahead of them? Are you speaking that into their lives? So if you, if you, if you don't live life with passion as a leader, you're not going to get followers. People want to be around that. There's so many people in America whose passion has burned out. It's not there anymore. It was there at one time. You know, one time in their life there was passion, there was excitement, and all of a sudden life just kicked them in the face, and that's gone. People today, you want to draw people to your business, then you be the person on fire. You know, let them be drawn to you because of who you are and what your life's about and your own integrity and your focus and your humility and your decision-making. 
Let them, let them join that in your life and be a part of that. I, there's a great quote. It said, I am more afraid of an army of 100 sheep led by a lion than I am of an army of 100 lions led by a sheep. What we're talking today about, you guys, is leadership. We're talking about leading. We're talking about 10 points of leadership that we look at. If we grade ourselves out one through five in the 10 points of leadership, and we may grade low. We might get three out of the 10, right? We might get four out of the 10. We might get one out of the 10. But you know the greatest thing we have is that once we understand these 10 points of leadership, now we got something to work on. You know, now that it's the, our own dreams and our own goals and our own passion and our own um, drive in our own life, our own sweet spot that's going to give us the opportunity to jump in the trenches and grow our lives and to grow our business. And so I want you all to know this, that I believe in every single one of you. I believe you're at the threshold of becoming one of the biggest leaders in this company. But you've got to decide that. You've got to make that decision. So as we look at these 10 points of leadership today, how do you fare? How, how, do, how do you do in, in, in that arena? You know what? Draw a line today. Go out and decide, you know what, that's it, period. I'm moving forward. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of not more, being where I need to be in this business. But I want to challenge you to do this. I want to challenge you to become leader of leaders. I don't want you to just be a leader in Beachbody. I want you to lead the leaders. And if you set that as a goal, then you look at these 10 points of leadership every day. You will do what it takes to grow and to go out and to accomplish unbelievable things in your life. So I've enjoyed this time again with you guys this week. Hopefully there's some stuff here you can use in your lives. But go out and lead this company. We need you. We need you more than anything in the world to take responsibility for your life, to own your business, and to go out and blow this business up. So God bless you, everybody. I also want to say tomorrow, MJ Durkin, he's going to be talking about how to turn exposures into, into conversions. And I, I challenge you to get on. He did such a phenomenal, phenomenal job. He was so awesome in Nashville. I want to encourage you, get your people on, especially your brand new people. He's got such great information. He's an expert in the industry. Tomorrow, night, tomorrow at 9 a.m., jump on the call. So God bless you, everybody, and have yourself just an awesome day.